Hello everyone and welcome back to this series on how to draw iconic transport. I hope you're all keeping well and staying healthy. Now before we start of course if you haven't subscribed if you could do that that would be fabulous thank you very much and also ring that little bell icon if you want to know what's coming up next. Right the iconic transport today is a steam train and probably one of the most iconic steam trains of recent years and that's the Hogwarts Express from the Harry Potter movies. Okay now I'm going to draw slides from the side okay so it's going to look give us in perspective so I've indicated I kind of uh, what they call a horizon line here so all your parallel lines will run down towards that if they're above the horizon line they will run down like that at the top of the engine coming down like that you know, to join the horizon line just out of the picture here. And the rails, for instance, at the bottom will come up like that and eventually join outside the picture there. And everything else, all the parallel lines will continue and meet the same point out of your picture there. Okay? Uh, so let's start with the actual boiler itself. Basically, steam train is just a big long boiler with a cab at the end, you know? <laughs> so we start off with the, the front of the uh, boiler, which is uh, circular when seen from the front, but of course an oval when you see it from the side. So you get this kind of oval shape, coming like that, and then you have the top of the boiler coming down to there. And this particular engine is uh, three sections, you get a section like that, and then down about here you have uh, the curve of a section which is slightly raised up, like that, there, and then a section at the back which is slightly squarish in shape before you get to the cabin there with the curved roof and of course the edge of the curved roof will come down like that and then now you've got a window in the front here, come in, okay. And along the side of the boiler, you have a rail which starts here, and we're again trying to get these lines, you know, converging. That line will run up like that, and turn in over the front, and curve up over the top like that, and then appear around the other side here. And right at the, the front of the engine here, we have a, a big nameplate which has the name of the Hot Watch Express on it. So you get that kind of shape there, okay? And the number underneath. All right, okay. Now this sits on top of a kind of plate like this, which runs along. And as it comes to the front, you get this kind of curved shape here, and then the front will run like that, and then the opposite of that curve will come in there. And sticking out at the front here, we have the plate for the buffers. So you get a big rectangle like that, and the buffers are sticking out like that. Okay, one here, one here. putting this in roughly just now and the front you have a, a big hook for coupling up with other engines okay and on the front here you also have lanterns in this case I'm going to give it three lanterns one there one there and one here okay and uh, then some of the details, for instance, coming down from here, we have a, a pipe connected to the, the boiler housing, which actually comes up. I'll just draw another pile line along here. And that joins that shape there. This connects to a big shape just below here, which actually has the cylinders in it. And connected to the cylinders, of course, you have the pistons three pistons going into that box there and all the steam comes out of that and then goes up through the funnel. So it all makes sense. <laughs> okay, you get the funnel coming in here. And this other one down here, not a funnel so much as a kind of steam outlet 
And it's got another couple of things on the side there like that. And you see the curves coming around here. Of course, all the rivets, these are done in sections, of course, so you see lines of rivets coming up here. On the front, you'll have an opening handle and also the, the oval shape of the, the front, the front door, I suppose you can call it, which you open up, you know. So this is, uh, that's a basic shape at the top. Now, these pistons join onto machinery which uh, is going to drive the wheels. So you have these things connections coming in here, like that, and then you have the wheel, first big wheel, first big drive wheel coming in here like that. And you have a crankshaft connected along this way, past the second wheel which comes in here, All right, and the joint there with the third wheel peering about here. Okay, and in this particular engine, above that, above each wheel, you have a curve kind of compartment, something like that. Okay, you have one here as well. And above this middle one, you have another nameplate, and on that it says Hogwarts Castle. All right, now you can then pass this here to a foot plate. Here's the window there. Okay, and behind this you have the tender. The front part of the tender has coal in it, and the back part, the water for the steam engine. Okay, and these have three wheels here on this side, and each one has this coming down to the center spoke. That one there. Um, one there, one there, and one there. Okay, I'll put these details in later. And on the front we have wheels as well, okay? We have one wheel starting here. Like that. And then we have stuff under the train, which we're shading in, and you see the other wheel coming in here. There's the other rail appearing, like that. Okay, so there we have the basic shapes. On these we have the kind of brake shoes there, like that. In the center of the wheel is about here with the spokes coming up. And this one too. Okay, so if you think your way through the shapes on the train, it makes it a lot easier to draw. You know, it looks quite complicated, but in actual fact, once you think about what's happening, um, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Okay, so I'm going to get a, a pen now. I'm going to start to put a lot of the details and ink it in. All right, I'll start up here with the main chimney here. Like that. The edge coming in there, like that. And this comes down and the slope and curves up over the top of the train there. And then as I said, you have this line curving down part of the part of the joint. And on the joint, of course, the details like, for instance, the rivets, so you can draw them in, come in like that all the way around. Okay, and down to this now. This is the outlet for the steam from the pistons. Okay, and we'll go to the front now, and we'll get, well, before I do that, I think I'll draw part of this uh, handrail, I think it must be, to be quite honest. You get it joining onto the boiler there, and that continues down there. Another one coming in there, like that. I'll carry on with that in a minute. And it curves up and around the other side of the front there, okay, and appears out and carries on down this side, okay? And then, of course, what we have is the nameplate plate 
like that, which has a double line around it. Okay, then below that we have the number of the train. And the number of the train which actually is used in the Harry Potter movies is 5972. So you get 5, 9, 7, 2. And then you have the handle for opening here. Okay, so I'm going to put some more detail in here. These are the ones you can see already. Uh, as I come back down here, I'll join up with you again, but I'll, I'll continue and do that and catch up with you when I've done it. Okay. Okay, I've inked in the top part, including some exterior rivets and so on, and the hinges for the doors. And I'm now going to ink in the bottom part. And this part here, as I said, uh, houses the pistons. Right there. Uh, the cylinders rather. These are the pistons here pushing into the cylinders there. Okay, and they are connected to these rods which are connected to the central part here. You can simplify the shapes, you know, these are not uh, perfect details but that gives you an idea of the construction. And then we have this crankshaft here which is connected right along like that, a couple of lines along it. And we have another connection there, just beyond the second wheel there. Okay, which comes in and joins onto the centre. Then we have the shape of the brake shoe there, and then the outside of that wheel come in. Like that. You get the thickness coming up this underneath that line, coming back down again. That and you get the inside shape there coming down to the rail. And we go to this one here. We have another shape up here with a connection in there. And then you have the oval shape of the wheel coming around. Outside shape. The inner part of the wheel coming in there. And then I forgot there's actually another wheel here. There's two smaller wheels at the front and this side. So you get one coming in here. Okay, the center and then the spokes coming in. And then the center one here. The oval of the wheel coming in like that. Outside shape. the inner part. Okay, now we have the rail connected to it, even then very lightly here, like that. The top of the rail coming in there. And so on, the bottom disappearing in like that. Okay, now inside these shapes here, I'll do this other uh, wheel first of all, shape of it. Going to be a lot of shading on these uh, these shapes because I'm going to be doing uh, a pencil drawing for you, okay? So some of these shades, shapes will be kind of blacked out. So I'm just drawing the shapes in very basically just now. These shapes that you'll see at the front of the train. Like this. And the spokes of that wheel appearing in there. And then all of this in here will be, will be shaded. Okay? And then we have the the spokes coming in here. i put another few more spokes in there, I think, to be honest. Coming in there. Like that, okay. And one coming in there. Alright, and back up here, there'll be shape, and then the bottom of that, and there's a dark bit coming underneath there. And round to these now, we have the shape coming in there and then the spokes. Okay, so I'll continue to do that, I'll fill in that with the pen and catch it when I've finished. 
Okay, I'm ready to shade in now. I've got a 4B pencil, uh, which is dark enough at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to start off with some shading underneath here. And the way I use a pencil is in slightly kind of round shapes like that. You see that? Now, obviously coming down, there's another line along there, by the way, which I've got to put in. As uh, we shiny, and you'll get dark shading down one part of the chimney here. Sloping out like that. Getting a bit fainter as you come towards the centre. And leave a bit of light there, and then another dark shape coming in there. Okay, a bit of shading around here. See, that gives you a sense of the cylindrical nature of that. Okay, a bit of shading in there as well. And I'm also going to be doing some smoke coming out of here, kind of drifting out. Again, you can use just kind of gentle curving lines like that. And the circular motion again. And if you shade a bit darker, put a bit more pressure on your pencil underneath at the bottom of the smoke there and lighten up as you go up. I'll carry and do that later. Okay, so I'm going to move on now to the actual big cylinder itself here. And what you do is get right down to the bottom and shade in very dark. A lot of weight in your pencil, like that, right along the bottom here. And bring it up to a line about here, just below the shape here, all right? So okay, just finishing this bottom part off, and then leave a gap and draw another line of shading coming down parallel to this one, right down to there, and shade that bit in. You want to get a sense of the, the, the shininess of the, the paint on the boiler here, okay? And then leave another little gap and put a bit of shading up here, a couple of lines up there near the top. Okay. And there's a shadow coming in here. Okay. That starts to give the suggestion of the shininess of that cylinder there. And this handrail across here will be dark on the underside. I'll do that right along. And uh, also, you'll get a reflection of the handle on the shiny paintwork here. Like that. And that'll continue right along here. Okay, I've shaded along here and I had a bit more smoke. And I'm just filling in the back of the tender here, which is uh, very dark down to there. Okay, and a bit of shading on here as well. Like that. And I'm going to move up to the front now underneath the boiler which is really pretty dark so I'm going to really put my weight on my pencil now and fill in this area here right underneath here coming along and any shapes that I come to if anything like these maybe leave one side slightly lighter and shade in a bit darker and the bits in between quite dark too And of course, when you come to a tube shape like that, remember, leave a little bit of light and then shade dark up one side like that. And then maybe touch down this side there, okay? Excellent. So I'll fill in that, uh, these dark bits now. Carrying one along here. On the top of these curves and dark in here, around the bottom of that other end plate there, and they dark in there, and then underneath this metal ridge alone and running along here, right along the top of the wheels. Okay. And then in here, of course, it's very dark between the spokes, between the wheels, all very black. And I'm going to be shading over the top of these uh, pistons and so on and, and the, the, the crankshaft as well. Right, okay, I've shaded in very dark between all the spokes and then back behind the wheels and so on. Just moving on to these, uh, this 
cylinder box now, and I'll do one side fairly dark, like that, and then dark at the bottom, and as I come up to that point here, make it slightly lighter, okay? You take the weight off your pencil, you get lighter tones. And coming up here, it's all fairly light, but a couple of kind of lines going across to suggest the shininess. Like that, okay? And as I said, I'm going to darken down now all of this area around about here that I've left white. This shade all over it, take it down a bit. Remember, this is an artistic impression. It's not an architectural drawing, <laughs> okay? So you want a bit of, use a bit of imagination, you know? There you go. Get a nice impression. That's better. And bring all that down there. And this down here too. Okay, I'm going to move up here now. I'm using a bit of paper, as you notice, to stop my hand smudging all the pencil. Um, this outside line here is going to be very dark. And as I come to the, the door here, it's going to be dark at the bottom, very dark, and coming up to a bit lighter in the middle here. Okay, I'm just uh, finishing this off now. I've moved to a slightly darker pencil. This is a 6B now. It's a bit more intense black. And uh, the front here, underneath this ridge, this metal ridge, will be shaded. So dark under the ridge and then lighter as you come down the curve. Like that, okay? And then the lanterns darken the side like that, and the inside. We have a little shading on the front. Like that. Uh, can you imagine being a little bit dirty, you know, with all the stuff that's thrown up when the train's moving? And a bit of shading on the front of the buffer plate here. And of course these here uh, are shiny, so again you use your shaded lines, like that, leave a gap, and then put another one in, okay, like that, and then around the edge here, this will be shaded too, leave the front light, a couple of bits of shading on the buffers themselves. Okay, and then in here, very dark. Just shade the whole thing in. Just go for it. And fill in these shapes here. fill in any other little bits of shading that you've missed. A few more bits up here. Like that. And also underneath a bit of shading underneath the train itself. And you can get the sensation of movement by using your pencil lines along the line of the track like that. And then even outside like that, keep your lines going towards that vanishing point, away out here, remember? Okay. Move that out of the way just now. Excellent. Right, well I could tickle like this for quite a long time, but uh, <laughs> I think I'll leave it there. It gives you an, the impression of the steam train and what to do to create a really good looking pencil sketch. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you can join me again fairly soon. Okay, in the meantime, all the best, and happy drawing.